boy who was left out. John's mother was ill at Christmas time, so his daddy sent him to his granny's for a few days. John was unhappy because although he loved his granny, it was horrid not being at home for Christmas. And besides, he would miss going to his cousin's party and to his friend Harry's party too. Granny gave him as nice a Christmas as she could. After Christmas, when John was looking out the window one morning, he saw a cart going by carrying a most enormous Christmas tree. Look, Granny, he cried, what is that big Christmas tree for? That's for the children's party at the village hall, said Granny. Mrs Jolly always gives a party to all the village children after Christmas, and they have a fine Christmas tree. Shall I be asked too? said John eagerly. No, you haven't been asked, said Granny. You aren't really one of the village children, you see. And besides, Mrs Jolly doesn't even know you're here with me. Poor John. He was to be left out of Mrs Jolly's party too, as well as out of the parties he'd really been asked to. It was a real shame. He wondered what sort of toys Mrs Jolly would put on the tree, how lovely it would look, all lit with candles and dressed with bright ornaments and toys. Now two days later, John went for a walk, and as he went along the bumpy little lane, a motor car passed him going to the village hall, laden with good things to the party next day and with a grey parcel of toys tied to the back of the car for the Christmas tree. And you know what happened when the car passed John. It went over a big hole in the lane, and the parcel of toys burst open. Seven or eight of them fell into the road. A train, a book, a spinning top, a doll, and two or three more. The car went on, and there were the toys left in the road. John stared at them. What did he do? What would you do? Look at that, said John, a whole heap of toys and no one in sight. I've been left out of all of my parties. I don't see why I shouldn't pick up these toys and have them for myself. I can hide them away from Granny. He picked them up, but on the way home he began to think hard. It's a horrid thing to do. It isn't honest. These toys are meant for the other children and they will have to go without. It's nobody's fault that I am left out of the village party. I shall take the toys to the hall and give them to the people there who are decorating the tree. I shall think a lot better of myself if I will do that. So off trudged John to the hall, and whom should he see there but Mrs Jolly? Your car dropped these toys, said John. Mrs Jolly beamed at him. Oh, you are a good boy, she said. Thank you. I shall see you at the party tomorrow, shan't I? No, said John. I haven't been asked. I'm just staying with my granny. I'm not really one of the village children. Oh, what does that matter? cried Mrs Jolly. We can't leave out a nice honest little boy like you. Come along tomorrow at three. So John's going, and I shouldn't be surprised if he has one of the very best presents of the tree. He will certainly have a good time, for there are balloons and sweets, oranges and crackers by the hundred. But John does deserve a jolly good party. Don't you think so?